that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. Some people have been bullied, some people are just stressed out, some people are insecure. That most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just li you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying. Because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, it's soul killing. Soul killing. They're yeah. stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television, and they're f If people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep, at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape, and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're going to be okay. For making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living, and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that, and you sell that furniture, look, man, if you can do that, you could, you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done, and you get this satisfaction, and you sell it to someone, and that pays your bills, that is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance and you, you know you're not really you know you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future, this kind of like you're like kill me now. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else. And I hope they understand that they can. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're f and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Some people have been bullied. Some people are just stressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. I call myself fat because I was fat and people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's going to change. In this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great they tell us what we want to hear the second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people we don't like that feeling that challenge and feeling that of, of that person waking up 3 30 in the morning and say, hey put your shit on we're going for a run we like that person who says hey you know what, man i don't feel good today man and they say oh it's okay brother we don't want that motherfuckers like this hey man no bro get your shit on man stop being a punk it's all about the pretty mind so what's the quitting in mind? So let's say it's day one of a job interview. We all know what it feels like. You have your clothes laid out. You got your food ready to go in the morning. You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. You get the job. Merry Christmas. All right. After a couple months, you start showing up to work a little later. You don't look as good, your clothes aren't laid out, your breakfast isn't ready, your mind gets softer. We do that with everything in life. When New Year's coming up, guess what? You don't have a fucking pretty mind. Repetition every day. Stay hard. I believe that most human beings 
are only living at about 40% of their capability. The mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor's set for 91.